So Chris, welcome to Fright Fest. Uh, you're here with your film, Time Travel is Dangerous. Now this film started as a short. How did the, the journey go from, from short to feature? Yeah, we started making a short, me, Ruth and Megan, who were originally friends, uh, and I, I thought how funny they were when we first met. And then we, we did this 48 hour short competition where we had a weekend. So the idea sort of came from us messing about, really, over the period of a weekend. Um, and then we got involved um, when they started making it into a feature, or like Chris, we kind of met Chris at Cannes actually, and he was telling us about it, and then that's when we sort of captured our imagination, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so um, they already had the short film, so we had that sort of proof of concept, um, and it's basically about these two women, Ruth and Megan, who own a vintage shop and use a time machine to travel to the past and get things to their shop. So it's very silly, um, and we just kind of came on board and really enjoyed uh, writing with, with them and um, yeah and produced it as well so yeah it was a good time. And how does it feel when you're you know you're casting and you're throwing these nets out to or oh, maybe it'd be great it'd be cool if Stephen Fry could narrate it and so what does it feel like then when people like that come back and go yeah no yeah I want to make your film? Uh, yeah it's it's good to have uh, a really good cast come on board because it's when you show them the script and they go, oh, this is actually quite good, this is quite funny, well, we'll do this, that, is, that feels really good. And I think we had critical mass when we got people like Johnny Vegas in, and everyone wants to work with Johnny Vegas, so that actually helped us get more people. And then by the time we had basically the edit together and we could show that the film is uh, going to be good, we could get uh, the wonderful Stephen Fry to narrate. Um, and we just I just wanted to do something about time travel because I run a vintage shop so I was like that's quite a good you know premise to have that we're getting the stuff from the past and bring it in so we did a little short and then from that it kind of escalated people were like oh you should make this into a, a feature but obviously you've got no experience in film so um, for me it was a bit like I'd won a competition <laughs> and tell me what stage did you get involved uh, right at the end of the pandemic director Chris sent me the script in the, their movie, the little short film, and I, I was like, "What? What is this? Who are these people? How do I become friends with them?" And then when he, when, you know, I'm reading the script, and I'm, when I realize it's a movie about two women who go back in time to steal things to sell at their vintage shop, but the two women are being played by two actual women who own a vintage shop. That just, it's so meta, yeah. and. It's so funny. It's like, it's like a half real, half not real Bill and Ted, with yeah. two lady best friends. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm any good in it or not. It's all about me, obviously, uh, because it's so long ago since we did it. I can't remember. But it, it's it, I play Martin, a rather nerdy, uh, surprise that a rather nerdy gentleman who is a, a science teacher, I think, and uh, he's head of testes which is a, an organization that deals with uh, uh, exploring the uh, world of sci-fi. And uh, I'm a rather self-important person, and I think I might get my comeuppance in the film. That's the character, not me. Well, for me, it was um, quite personal because I used to shop in the shop Cha Cha Cha, which I think features, well, it does feature in the, in the story, and I... I bought all my lampshades there, <laughs> amongst other things. Brilliant shop, and I made friends with um, Ruth and Megan, and uh, I did a short film with them. Um, I can't remember when, quite a long time ago. And then this came up, and, um, and that's how I got involved, because I, I went to the shops. <laughs> I wish getting work was as easy as that most of the time. <laughs> exactly. Pop to the shops, get a job. <laughs> Kind of carrots, a job. <laughs> Let's make a film. Yes. You now you're in the shop. <laughs> mm. What about you? Um, I, I was just sent the script and I really liked it because it was a bit odd and, um, and it was a fun character. Uh, I just thought, oh, actually, this sounds like a good, good project to be involved in. And why a dodgem car? You know, there's so many different vessels to travel through time in film history. Why a dodgem car? Well, the easiest answer is I found it for 100 quid on eBay. So, <laughs> so I just travelled up north to, they were throwing it out of a, an, an old uh, fairground. So uh, went up there with a van, got it, brought it back. So I go to the London Sci-Fi Film Festival 
every year. Right. Okay. It's now in its 24th, 25th year. So I've been going since day one. And every year they have a 48 hour film challenge. Okay. So one year I got along to the 48 hour film challenge and they do a list of the top 10, so and so and out. Three out of those 10 win the prize. I'm watching one of the films and I wonder, wait a minute. I know those girls. Look, they've got a place around the corner where I live. I'm like, huh? People were laughing in it, and it was, it was two girls. They find a time machine. They jump back in the past, get gear because they said they they said, and I was like, wow. Was so, I went next the next day, and I went round. I went, why come? Why come you guys never went there? You should have gone. The people were laughing. It was brilliant. Brr. So every time I saw them, I kept on saying, you guys should make it into a film, man. You should make it into a film. So ladies and gentlemen, it's my fault. I think we have to talk a little bit about the, the method of time travel. You know, that's you know, always what people remember, you know, Bill and Ted, it's, you know, a phone box. So in this, it's a, it's a dodgem car. Yeah. A what? It's a dodgem. It's a bumper what you, what? car. A bumper car. You call it a dodgem? Yeah, it's a bumper. It's, that's what it's called. That's what I it's... filmed the movie and we never told me that it wasn't. <laughs> A bumper car? It's a dodgem. It's a bumper car. A no, dodgem? That's what we call them here. What do you call it? A dodgem rink? Because you, you would go to dodge the... them. Because you've got to you've got to dodge everybody. That's so when you when you're at the the carnival and it, what does it say on the? What does the sign say? Dodgems. Yeah. Dodgem ride. I don't know what we have. It, why you don't know that? That's weird. Anyway, yeah. I, I am aghast. <laughs> And for those that aren't here, where should they be looking on social media, websites for, for news of, of release and other screenings? Yeah, keep, we've got a good social media. We have a, uh, a website with uh, games and experiences. We have an AR experience on there. Uh, but we are planning to do a wider release in the UK, hopefully in the cinemas around March, so spring 25. Nice. So uh, everyone get that in their diaries. Yes. Yes. Thank you.